conducted a piece of research earlier on this year uh, called the Visible Diggers Project um, that aimed to, uh, was aimed at university students. Um, we uh, created a questionnaire and sent it out to uh, institutions across the country and we had over 100 uh, results back. And it was a series of questions um, regarding whether students felt like they were uh, valued in the field when they were conducting uh, archaeological field work with their universities, uh, whether they felt like their interpretations were being heard, uh, whether they felt like they were given sufficient instruction and things like that. So in the first half of this presentation, we'll uh, give you a brief overview of how that went and how it's affected our practice. Uh, and how that's also applicable to engaging with 16 to 25s. Many of the, the students that um, filled in the questionnaire were in that age group anyway. And then in the second half of the presentation, we'll um, let you know about some of the things that our department and the university more generally is doing to engage young people with archaeology as well. Uh, so, in, so a few things from the results of the uh, survey that we sent out. Uh, when we asked people whether they uh, made interpretations about the site uh, that they were working on in general, uh, the, most pro the most popular ca category by far was uh, not sure. Uh, even uh, uh, level three and master's level students um, felt that they weren't sure whether they'd made a, an inter you know, a contribution to the overall, overall interpretation of the site. Um, so, um, <clears throat> we found that in engagement with interpretation also um, had an impact on whether students enjoyed the, the, the excavations. Uh, discovering, uh, uh, making a significant find had a big impact as well. Um, much more students felt that they enjoyed their field work if, if they felt like they made a, a discovery that was meaningful. Um, We've, uh, the, we felt that the hierarchy between uh, dig directors, uh, supervisors, and uh, student groups also had an effect on um, student engagement with the excavations. And this is your part. <laughs> While 78% of students felt that they were able to communicate their interpretations with the supervisors, there still appears to have been some kind of hierarchy between the students and the supervisors. A student number 16 said, there was no opportunity for students to contribute their own interpretations of the site or offer ideas. An individual on our site who did offer their interpretations was criticised for doing so in private discussions and considered rude for giving an opinion that differed from the site directors. While supervisors may have may affect student experience, students can have that power as well. Uh, hierarchies can also develop between different groups of students which may have negative consequences. During one of the focus groups a student stated that there were tensions between different groups of students. The interpretations of those from one group were not as valued, we felt like an irritation. However, students also have the power to positively affect each other. Uh, yeah. okay. um, so, communication. Um, one of the more interesting statistics that came from the um, study was that nearly 10% less females felt like they were given um, sufficient instruction um, on their excavation than male uh, students. Obviously, this is only in, an indication, um, but really this just kind of highlights that we need to, um, the way that the instructions and information is um, understood by um, different age groups. Uh, it can depend on your background. Um, so just to be aware that it, you know, when we're trying to communicate with um, a younger demographic, for example, that the, uh, the way that we present information is, is understood differently by different groups. Um, and the, the, the methods that are used uh, by the uh, dig directors and supervisors to engage with students um, is also applicable with, uh, with those students then engaging with the public as well. So, uh, these are some of the other things that um, we've done with the university. Um, we've uh, tried to reach out to some more, more diverse audiences. This is uh, me and Stephanie um, on our local TV station, that's Manchester. Um, we uh, gave an archaeology uh, special, uh, acting like experts. Um, 
Uh, this was on a, a TV show called That's Pride, which is um, a, uh, a a channel that uh, well, a TV program that deals with LGBTQ issues. Um, so we um, we're trying to reach out to kind of like a more diverse audience by appearing on that show. Um, one of the uh, excavations that our university runs also had um, a provision this year for um, physically disabled uh, volunteers to come and work on the site as well. So uh, uh, our university um, uh, is quite conscious of reaching out to kind of like diversify the audience that we're trying to connect with. Um, we recently ran a pop of archaeology day. So uh, this is our anatomically correct skeleton, is a replica obviously. Um, but we invited people to you know, come and take a selfie with the skeleton, but also um, learn more about it. Um, you know, it, we tried to be kind of current and engaging um, using the kind of selfie culture. Uh, but you know, because archaeology needs to kind of like have a fun element too. It needs to be appealing, we think. Um, The archaeology department at the university has also uh, participated in several community archaeology projects, the two most prominent of which were the Whitworth Park project and the project at Ashton Park. So the Whitworth Park project is organised and run by the university in conjunction with the Manchester Museum, the Whitworth Art Gallery and other organisations as well. Uh, the project is run every year and aims to encourage the community involvement within the history of the park its area as well as its future uh, thus far it has been quite a success uh, the Ashton Park was conducted last <laughs> summer at Ashton and was aimed at both children and young adults it was led by Dr Hannah Cobb from the University of Manchester and the aim of this was to conduct geophysical analysis just around the site uh, there was also an information tent set up to encourage the public to come and speak with the team about the work and the history of the site uh, the community was also able to get involved with the geophysics, which was pretty successful and everyone seemed to enjoy themselves. Uh, the community engagement, we feel, is quite an important part within archaeology. And it doesn't just benefit the community, but it benefits us as well. Um, it's uh, beneficial for the public, as it's a way into archaeology without really having to go through the academic path if they don't necessarily want to. Um, also, it, can, it is worth mentioning that community archaeology can enhance our own interpretations of the sites, as um, a lot of communities already have quite a deep understanding of their area. Like when I was digging in Scotland, a lot of people would come to us in open days and tell us about the history of the site, and it was just like they knew so much more than we did. Like it really did like allow us to like open our minds a bit more and like understand what we were dealing with. So as uh, Kim touched upon before, um, the uh, museums are quite often um, kind of a, a really important resource engaging with the public. Um, it's quite uh, often the, the first kind of uh, uh, contact that, you, that uh, we have with archaeological material and objects. And we're really lucky to have one of the biggest institutional museums in the country on our campus. Um, so uh, like you said, that they've got a really good and long-standing provision for um, young members. They've also just opened a new study area on the right there, um, which is a space for uh, academic staff, students, um, uh, museum staff, and uh, members of the public to kind of come together uh, in a shared interest of uh, different things, uh, archaeology, anthropology, and natural history as well. Uh, yeah, so to kind of uh, sum up, it would be great to hear what you guys think as well. This is really just kind of a student uh, perspective on it. Uh, but the results of uh, the Visible Diggers was that um, even though many of the students uh, clearly had um, carried out interpretive acts such as uh, taking photographs, uh, site drawings, um, making students aware that they are interpreting um, was the was kind of like the main issue. So I think that can be applicable to dealing with the public as well, um, especially with things like community archaeology and uh, museum engagement and things like that. Uh, and yeah, let's make archaeology ex uh, as exciting and relevant as possible. It needs to be um, appealing for um, to uh, get young people to to want to pursue it in the first place. And publicity is key. It's about getting it out there. Um, we can't just sit and wait for people to apply. We need to be proactive. Um, and uh, archaeology is for everybody. Like the profile and the profession has showed that um, 
the uh, archaeological discipline is like a little is fairly undiverse at the moment. So um, it would do well to reach uh, a more diverse range of demographics uh, because archaeology is cool. Is the um, is the uh, main point of this uh, presentation? I think. So yeah, thank you. Thanks for bearing with us as well.